Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. In this video, we'll be rescuing that dummy. Although that might seem like a basic crawling rescue, it actually is not. Usually in the training centers, we only train with ropes that are eight meters tall or long, and you usually have about four or three meters of rope above us. That means we have very little stretch. When we're working outside, we always have like 10, 20, 30, 50, 100 meters of rope and a lot of stretch, and that changes the crawl rescue. So I'm gonna show you in this video what can go wrong and how to prevent that. There's, of course, multiple ways to do it. I will show you one way in this video. If you want to see more ways, leave a comment and I'll make a video about five ways to chest ascend a rescue or something like that. All right, what have you rigged up? Uh, we have a Courant Ultima rope uh, with a main anchor point that's right here. And I had to redirect the rope all the way through the training center to get the length. So we have an anchor point over there, it goes all the way over there, then it goes all the way up there, back, and then it comes down from the dummy in here. So essentially the, uh, the dummy is suspended in about 25 meters of rope, I would say. The rope is 60, I used a double. There's five meters below, so about uh, 25 meters of rope. Usually we have more rope than that. You can see the amount of stretch in the rope over here. When I lifted the dummy up and put it in the rope, these two were at the same length, the same tightness. Right now, this whole loop, this is about, what would it be? 1.5 meters of stretch already in the rope. If I would get in the other rope to pass my casualty, we both take 1.5 meters of stretch, so if I would do my chest to center rescue, the dummy will go up 1.5, he comes to me, I will go down 1.5, so there's three meters of difference. In the real world, it's a, probably a bit less, and it, it, it's different for each type of rope, but it's a big difference, and you will see what will happen in a minute. So let's see how much stretch there is in this rope. Right now, I've taken the slack out, I'm gonna stand up, Nothing happens, that's one. That's about a good meter of slack that I pulled out. I will ascend up to my casualty, which with all the ropes here is a little bit more tricky. Whee! Manage the backup. Manage the back up. I'm trying the new boost foot loop from CMC for this exercise. It's always good to do things you've never used when you're filming, just to find out how good they really are. All right, I climb up to my casualty and I will change over into my descender, which is normal. That's what we usually do. Actually, there is a crawl rescue you do where you stay in your, what do you call it? Where you stay in your ascender, the crawl to crawl bump. If you want to see that, leave a comment down below. You want to see how to do a crawl to crawl bump? Uh, hang on, before I do that. So, I need to change. Here's a nice little trick. I forgot my extra descender. How about some good preparation? So first I'm gonna use my own descender underneath the ASAP of the casualty, like so. Let me see if I can turn a little bit, turn. Always the same. All right, back in position. So I want to move this past my casualty. I will put my descender underneath my ASAP, underneath the chest ascender, and that will be my temporary backup point. So now I can move my ASAP up. I'm kind of struggling to stay positioned to the camera. Now I can move my backup device up, and I've passed the casualty. I can take my descender off again, and then thread it on the rope and change over. I step out into my descender 
and keep ascending. I can take off my casualties hand ascender because he doesn't need it anymore. Right now we're at the same height. I can get some separation if I put my knees down. I will connect my first cow tail or my long connection to the casualty where we do it normally. I'm using a homemade adjust. Then I will start preparing the normal crawl rescue. The same way as you can see in the video up here. So long connection, I will get my short connection or rescue set, attach it to the top D-ring as well, lock the descender. So now I'm finding that the ASAP is in my way. I already made one point of connection to the casualty so I can take off his ASAP. Most people start struggling here, but because of the tension it might get hard, so easy way, clip it from the casualty and then take it off. And then you can put it back somewhere where it is out of the way. So we do one more step up to get a little bit above the casualty. I will connect the short connection into my, ooh, what do you think about this? This has been happening a lot with the spark and you can prevent that by putting in one of those captive uh, thingies and I will put one in but I'm still in the testing out phase of the spark and this is one of the conclusions. Great descender but I don't like this. So adjust it, problem solved. I will connect the casualty to the descender, lock all back carabiners, check the system again. It'll be a about same height, same level. And here we go. I take my hand ascender and I will put it above this time. The casualty, I'm gonna clip my foot loop. I could clip it in here or I could choke it in here if I need the room. And I don't need the room right now. So I will do it like this, get an extra carabiner. Put the foot loop through. And now I'll do my the same thing I've done always, like I said in the video. Uh, I'm gonna stand up, do the counterbalance technique, and then lower the casualty down, and then we're gonna see what will happen. It's gonna be fun. It's been quite a while ago I did this, and the last time I did this, I ended up in a really nasty situation. It was all training, it was all for good fun. All right, so right now I'm seeing that if I'm gonna step into this foot loop, I don't like this friction on this side, so I'm gonna switch it over to the other side and now the rope path is clear. I will put the foot loop, my foot in the foot loop, measure my distances. I need a little bit more space with uh, the foot loop here. Adjust it, make it shorter. Make this one a bit higher, maybe lock the beaner, not very necessary. So I think I have enough room to kick him out of the crawl. A little bit one more higher. So I'm gonna stand up, put my full weight in the counterbalance and then lift the dummy, take the rope out of the chest ascender. All right, so what I often see people do, they start trying to kick like this and then move up. No, you need to stand up, put your full weight in and I will already see the stretch, right? It hardly worked, so that's because my rope. So I would need to go down a little bit more to be able to put more weight in. Oh, that's even more stretch. It will be a hard, difficult one. So I need to go down a little bit more to get out all the stretch out. Can almost do it. Need to go down a little bit more. I will step up, probably enough. Lift the dummy, open the crawl. Are you ready? The rope is out. Let's see if we can turn the camera. So the rope is out. He's attached to me. And now I'll, I will try to lower him controlled or maybe I lose my balance. Ah, oh, and it ends up like this. Damn it, my foot has moeten blijven vastzitten.
So that's not the example that I wanted to show because I wanted to end up with my foot in the foot loop up there. It slipped out. But now my ASAP is locked. There's like two people in it and you have to ascend back up and all kinds of problems to solve if this is a real emergency. You don't want to solve all these uh, self-created problems. So I'm going to reset it and do another bad example and then we'll show you the right example and we cut it here. So I had to reset a little bit because I showed the wrong example but it could be more wrong or more fun wrong and I want to show that one. So I will put my foot loop on. Let's kick him out of the chest ascender. I'm going to stand up to perform my counterbalance. I find out that I don't have enough leverage because of the stretch in the rope. So I need to descend a little bit more to be able to put more weight in the foot loop. So I descended a little bit more. I will stand up and then you see if I stand up what happens, right? The dummy goes down and I go up, but nothing really happens. I don't have the leverage to actually kick him out. So I go down a little bit more. I think I have enough leverage now. I hold the heavy part of the rope so it doesn't slide through the chest ascender. I'm gonna stand up and take him out of the chest ascender. One, the rope is out, the chest ascender is closed. I'm gonna pinch my foot loop and try to uh, raise my foot and lower the cash decontrol. But I misjudge, and now I end up like this, which is not where we want to be, okay? Now I'm stuck, I need to shout for help, help, and we need to do a rescue the rescuer situation because the person who has to rescue me needs to rescue two people. Or maybe I'm self-sufficient and I can rescue myself, which I think I can. Okay. Mm. Deze moet hier in. All right. To prevent that, there are several several ways to do it. Like I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to see more, then just drop a, a comment down below. And uh, I will make a video, there's like, I know about three or four ways, maybe five even, of how to solve this. And I'm going to show the most basic way as usual with the, only the gear that we have on our body all the time, because usually we have a descender, right? So the thing I'm going to do is, I will tell you right after you hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribing, hit that bell to always be notified of a new upload. Have you done it? All right, so now we'll tell you how to solve this little problem and make it a lot easier rescue. I think in Sprat it's even a level one rescue and something they learn, but I'm not sure about that. Please uh, help me learn about Sprat and leave a comment again. In Irata, on the level twos, this is the basic rescue they learn. But what we should be teaching is actually to change our casualty over to their descender. So I will thread the rope, don't spin. I will thread the rope in the descender. Take out the slack. I am not gonna lock off the descender, what we usually want to do, because the first thing I'm gonna do is go I'm gonna tighten this rope. And if I have to take this off the lock before that, that might be a little bit of a challenge because of the counterbalancing act. So I will step up, do the counterbalance, release the crawl, shorten the rope in the descender, lock the descender and sit back down and then you, see, you will see a huge difference in what will happen. Okay, my foot loop is uh, still attached. I'm gonna put my foot in it. Perform the counterbalance, I stand up and my full weight is in it. My full weight is in it, and as you can see, I'm quite comfortable. I'm going to lift the casualty up, take the rope out of the chest ascender, lock it off, shorten the rope through the rig or the descender, try to turn to the camera, and watch how little sit back I have. I will sit down, and I can already release the foot loop from my boot. 
put my knees on the cage to, to create some space. I'm going to clean up and do some rope management. And in all essence, I've basically created the level one rescue because it's from rescue from these centers. So some more rope management. Take this rope out of between us. Take this rope out between us. Manage that ASAP. Okay. Move to the other side. Sometimes you have a bad hair day, sometimes you have a bad rope day. This is one of those days. All right, it's almost done. So rope management is done. I will do a double check. I have a short connection to the casualty into my descender. I have a long connection to the casualty on the same point with the cow tail that I can shorten a little bit, but I need some space because I need to release this. This looks crooked because I've done this rescue three times in a row to show you all the examples. The rope ended up on the other side, but the moment I release this one, this will solve itself. All right, ropes are out of us, out of the, there are no ropes between us. I will lower the casualty down into the short connection, stay on the side. You see how far we went down? That's all stretching the rope. Take the rope out of the descender. Do some more rope management. All the ropes are clear. And then there's this little thing about the spark that's quite interesting. When you're doing a rescue. More on that after I tell you about this spot where we are in. We are at Industrial Klimmen in the Netherlands, where we teach IRATA, GWO, and all kinds of working at height training. There we have a website, a web store, where you can order all the climbing equipment you want. And if you use the link in the description down below, you get a little discount and you support the channel. So on our way down, with the Spark, you do not need a redirect carabiner. So if I would be using a different descender, I would need to take a carabiner and create some friction somewhere. Multiple ways to do it on the side, side ring, foot, uh, you could even put it through your uh, uh, leg loop, anywhere. But with the spark, the good thing is it's such a smooth descender, I can just descend down. I will do this. This was just to prevent me from spinning too, long, too much and give me, give me some form of control over the orientation. So now I'm going to go down. I check my ASAP that it runs freely. Otherwise I have to descend with two people and I will just descend down slow and controlled, mining the ASAP, mining the casualty onto the floor. See you in the next one. Stay connected. <laughs>